Hi friends, this is Tina and welcome to my new video. So as you can see from the title and the thumbnail of this video, I'm making a really autumnal mushroom theme for September. I'm just really excited to show this theme to you because it actually turned out so much better than what I thought in the beginning. And I also just really love the painting process and filming this video, which are both something that I don't know if I have enjoyed that much in the recent months. So yeah, I'm really excited that this was a little bit of an easier setup and I love doing it. But let's get into it with my cover page for September. And of course, I'm using my Mellow Days Reverie watercolor notebook. So for my cover page, I of course went with a really popular and well-known mushroom. This is a fly agaric. It's actually pretty poisonous, so I don't know why it's always <laughs> the one mushroom that people like to paint and draw, but I went with it as well. I think it has such a beautiful, vibrant color in it, so it was a great one to go with for my cover page. But as you can see, I chose to start this whole painting process by taking some masking fluid. So of course these mushrooms have these tiny white spots in the cap so I just went with the masking fluid to kind of preserve the white in the paper so I can just take it off later when I have painted it with red. But don't do this, this actually wasn't a good idea in the end and I would just suggest painting the whole mushroom cap with red first and then going with a white wash. And I did that later with another painting and that worked a lot better. After adding the masking fluid, I just started to go with red on top of that. So I went with red quash, but I mixed a little bit of yellow and black into it and just covered the whole cap with that. And then I took a darker red color and started to paint the edges a little darker. The whole idea behind shading these mushrooms was that I wanted the middle part of the mushrooms to be a little bit lighter in color and then the edges were a little bit darker. In the end, I actually really like the shading in these mushrooms. I really like the contrast that the darker red and lighter red added to this painting. Once I was done with the base of the mushroom caps, I just took this hook tool that I had and I started just scraping off the masking fluid. This was really messy and really hard because in the end, the red of the uh, mushroom caps just went everywhere on the page and stained a lot of spots in it. So again, I would highly recommend not doing this step at all. And I also felt like some of the spots were a little bit too perfect. So I just ended up covering some of them again and just painted some more random spots on top later with gouache. And at this point, I again just darkened some of the edges a little bit more and then I started to go with the white gouache on top. By the way, I used a couple of reference photos from Unsplash so I kind of know how the little spots look on top of the cap. So I will definitely link those photos down below if you also want to paint something like this. Again, if you're painting something like a plant or animals or mushrooms, I would always highly recommend just even looking at a reference photo so you know what you are doing. At this point, I also noticed that the lightest shades in the mushroom caps were not really light enough, so I just went with some lighter red gouache on top of that as well. Once I was done with the spots, I went with some black gouache and painted underneath them. It's almost like a little shadow underneath the white spots, but that actually made this painting look so much better than it did before. So I would not miss this step if you are going to be painting something like this. Once the whole mushroom caps were done, I went with some beige gouache to start painting the legs of the mushrooms. So like I said, I went with a light beige color and then I just took a darker color and added some shadow always to the right side of the mushrooms. They also have these fun little skirt looking things underneath the caps, so I added those as well. 
And again, I just kept blending and blending until I got the blended look and it looked a little bit more natural. And again, I left the left side a lot lighter in color and the right side was a lot darker. By the way, I know I have not used gouache in a long time in my paintings, so I guess this was long overdue. I really hope you like this theme. I know some people prefer watercolors and sometimes I do too, but this was actually not that time consuming of a theme, so it definitely worked a lot better with this one. And I also enjoyed just going in with gouache again after a little break. I was actually planning on leaving this painting as is, but I just felt like it needed a little bit more color and also I didn't really know how to blend the legs of the mushrooms into the page, if you know what I mean. So I decided to go with some really watery greenish brown gouache and just added that as my little grassy blob here in the bottom of the page. So like I said, I used a lot of water to get this more transparent look to the ground and then I also made these little branches or leaves or moss here in the bottom but I wanted that to be a little bit more opaque so I didn't add too much water into that. I decided to also add these little golden sparkles and stars to this page off camera. I actually had this vintage blouse, as you can see, as a prop for this whole video. So I didn't want to mess that with some golden watercolors. So I did it off camera because of that. I know it's not the best decision. <laughs> But yeah, I think those little sparkles and stars looked really cute with this page. It definitely gave this a more magical look and I am definitely living for that. But of course this page also needs a little header, so I went with my 005 Figma Micron fine liner and wrote September on the top of this page with this typewriter font. I used a similar font in March and I just think it looked really pretty and of course it worked with this more vintage cottage core type of theme. Because I was loving the vintage vibes, I also went with this old book page paper and just glued it onto the corners of the cover page. This was definitely one of those themes that was kind of growing in my head. I did not know what I was going to add when I started this page, but I think it turned out so much better than what I thought in the beginning. And all of the elements definitely work together in my opinion. But that was my cover page for September and then we are setting up my calendar spread. I did this change also last month but I decided not to do a content planner this month so my calendar spread is kind of combining my calendar and content planning so I'm making a full spread for my calendar. But in the spread I'm painting again mushrooms. I actually did not research for this video for some reason so I actually have no idea what these mushrooms could be called but they are pretty. They are kind of funny looking, so yeah. <laughs> I just made these really long mushrooms here. I think they looked good in the corner. And yeah, they are kind of this beige grayish color. And it was definitely a little bit harder to work on the shadows where I just had to work with one color. So I just made some darker and darker shades by just mixing some black into it. And then I just painted some of the legs of the mushrooms a little bit darker and also added some darker areas to the caps. As you can see, I was just slowly building this painting by adding some darker shadows to some places and maybe darkening them even more. It was kind of hard to see how the painting would look in the end because sometimes I thought I was done but it just looked a little bit too light and the contrast wasn't big enough so I just had to go in with some more darker colors on top. But don't be afraid to add darker colors to your painting. If you're working with gouache, you can always just go on top of that with a lighter shade if it doesn't turn out fine.
By the way, all of my used products are like always listed in the description below. If there's something missing or you want to know more specifics of some products or something like that, definitely leave a comment below and I can get back to you and answer your questions. I also added some grass and greenery in this painting as well. I usually did the same thing in all of my paintings, so there's nothing new there. But yeah, I think even though there's not that much going on in these paintings, I really still like the look and I like the more minimalistic painting style as well. And of course, it wasn't too time consuming because I didn't have to make a full background. I'm really happy I came up with this theme idea. It's definitely not super original, by the way. I think so many people are making a mushroom theme for September. It's kind of like a yearly thing, I guess. But I've also been mushroom picking a couple of times already this year, and I just have a feeling that I will do more of that in September also. So I guess this kind of works perfectly for this time of the year for me. In this whole theme, I also used a lot of Archer and Olive acrylographs in different shades. And I was kind of changing between red, green and brown. So for this calendar spread, I chose to use red for the numbers of the month. And then I also wrote the monthly header with the same Pigma Micron that I used for my cover page. For the calendar grid itself, I first thought I would go with a brown acrylograph, but then I chose to do black instead. I actually don't know what I think about this right now. I don't think it's really that nice. I think the brown would have suited it a little bit better maybe, but there is no turning back now. <laughs> I also added a little bit of sparkles around the header and then I added the dates for the calendar. I actually ran into a little bit of a problem because my printer completely stopped working so I couldn't add the um, decorational papers in the spread right now. So I just went to the next spread and added the papers a little bit later. This actually became a big problem because I had to go to a library the next morning to print some more of that paper. So. <laughs> Yeah, that was a bit of a hassle, but I'm glad I got it done and got to move on. So the next spread that I'm working on right now is my tracker spread as always. And for this, I decided to do a little bit of a more detailed painting. So I made this basket full of mushrooms. These are actually maybe the only eatable mushrooms that I'm making in this whole theme. But yeah, I just added these mushrooms on a basket and I first just focused on the mushrooms and the caps and I just colored them with this orangey brown color. By the way, sorry if this painting process is really fast. I tried to make it as slow as possible, but the problem is that I had a little bit more footage than in the past couple of months that I've done videos. So I just had to do it a lot faster this time. I really hope you don't mind that. <laughs> But how I shaded these mushrooms and how I colored them, I looked at the mushrooms and thought that some of them are on the top of the bunch of mushrooms in the basket and some of them are a little bit lower. And the ones that are basically in the bottom, I made this almost shadowy uh, dark brown color. And then the ones that were on top were obviously the ones that were the lightest color. And then I looked at some that were maybe in the middle and I kind of just darkened some of the edges a little bit, especially the edges that touch the ones that are on the top. I darkened them a little bit more so the ones that are on top can, you know, pop a little bit more because they are the ones that the light hits the most. I really hope that makes any sense. <laughs> But the next step was just coloring the background, the basically the under layer of the basket, and then I started working on the basket itself. Mm -hmm. 
I don't know if the pattern on the basket really works at all. I was just looking at a reference photo really loosely to see how these baskets are usually made. But I'm not sure if I really nailed it. I'm sometimes really bad with perspective. But I don't really let that bug me at all. It's just a small little detail. No one sees that. <laughs> so yeah, I just painted the whole basket with these brown shades and added some shadows to some of the corners and some of the areas of it. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Even though this looks like it took a little bit more time, it's a little bit more realistic, I guess, than some of the other paintings that I made in this setup, it was still a pretty fast one, so I think I found the balance this time with making pretty paintings and not really spending too much time on them. But after the painting was done, I just made my header on the top left of the spread and then I started making my small calendars for my habit trackers. And this is actually the first time I think ever that I'm doing these uh, mini calendars that are the shape of the month, if that makes any sense. So they are not just rectangles, but they have the individual days, I guess. So yeah, I just made a little habit tracker like that and then I added my mood tracker below that. I will also track my sleep there. But this is a really handy layout that I've been using for a long time now and it just works for me. So I decided to go with the similar one. But then I just glued this piece of paper to the corner of the spread and that is it for this one. And now that we got the paper after my trip to the library, <laughs> I uh, flipped back to my calendar spread and just added that paper to the corners of my calendar spread as well. I've been enjoying adding some random papers in my setups lately. I feel like they just make the spread easily a little bit more interesting without having to actually think about more time-consuming decorations so that's always a fun little add-on to the spreads. I also decided to color the dates of my calendar spread a little bit differently because I think it just looked a little bit bland without it. But yeah, just a little detail and then we can set up my next spread, which is my playlist spread. There's actually a playlist in the right side of the spread, but the left side is left empty. I don't know what to add there yet. I might do some packing list because we are moving. I don't really know what I'm going to be using it for, but I will see that later. So yeah, I just wrote playlist on the right side and then I started working on the decorations for the spread. So first I just added this red little border for the page, but I'm actually going to be covering that up later because I got a better idea. <laughs> So in the lower right corner, I decided to paint some of the similar mushrooms as in my calendar spread. They're actually not the same. I use different reference photos, but they kind of look similar. Again, I will leave some reference photos down below that I use from Unsplash if you want to also look at them and maybe use them yourself. By the way, I know I really haven't been that active here on YouTube for the last couple of months. I have been kind of busy because I've been working on my Pantone challenge and painting every day. Now I've done it and I don't have to paint anymore, even though I loved it. Now I'm not that busy anymore and I can focus on other things. So I think the next month here on YouTube will be a little bit more interesting because I think I will have a little bit more time to work on other videos. And I already have a couple of videos that I'm planning on publishing in the next month. So yeah, look forward to that. And again, I'm sorry for taking a little break here and there and kind of just posting these plan with me videos, but I will definitely be posting more in the future when we are moving into our new apartment and I will have a little bit more space and time to film different kinds of videos.
But of course, as my last little detail, I added sparkles to this page. Here you can see how I did it. I had to cover basically everything when I was doing it so I wouldn't completely ruin the whole table and my spread. The last thing I did was a little bit different because I actually painted this border to this whole spread, kind of going with that frame I did earlier. But I'm not actually including this in the video because I think it's pretty self-explanatory. I'm just coloring in. Here is a finished spread and we are finally getting to my last spread of this whole theme, which is going to be my first weekly spread. Again, I'm not publishing my weekly spread video this month, but if you want to see my weeklies for the upcoming weeks, definitely follow me on Instagram at Dina's Diary so you will not miss them. So as you can see, I'm painting the same mushrooms in this spread as I did in my cover page. It was just an easy one and I loved how much color it brought to the page, so that was why I chose it again. And I also wanted to paint them a little differently this time without using the masking fluid and also making them in different kind of angles or a couple of them are pointing upwards. Other than that, I pretty much did it in the exact same way, but this was so much easier because I did not use the masking fluid. Blending everything was just so much easier when I didn't have to worry about the masking fluid or just painting over it. It was really, really hard to do. So yeah, this was just a fun little quick painting. I have been feeling really weird about bullet journaling lately because I haven't really used my journal as much as I've used before and I just haven't really felt motivated to use it, I guess. I just haven't even felt like doing the spread sometimes. So I've been needing to change something. And what I've changed recently is the way I do my weeklies, at least for now, is I've been doing my weeklies in a way that I leave a big separate space for my journaling and then have another section for my tasks and events. So I can easily write about my days without having one separate space for each day. And I can just now write things more freely without having to think how much I'm writing each day. Sometimes I can skip it, sometimes I can write a lot more. It also, I think, looks a little bit nicer this way, but I don't know. I think this is something that I will do in the future too because I've liked the change a lot. So in this spread as well, I have the right page reserved for my daily journaling and the left side is for my events or tasks that I have throughout the week. I think mushrooms in a way have some magic in them. Every time that I think of like a fairy tale or a children's story that has something to do with forests, I always think of mushrooms and these sparkly golden things. <laughs> you know, I, I just think that those go so well together and there's definitely some magic in mushrooms. I of course need to come up with another autumnal theme for next month as well, so if you have any ideas, definitely leave them below because we only, at least I think so, we only have two kind of autumnal months here in Finland, so I always try to think of autumnal themes for both of these months. So as you can see, I wrote the days of the week on the left side and underneath them I can write all of my tasks and events. I think that's a lot easier, a lot cleaner as well, and I think it will be something that might take me out of this bullet journaling problem that I'm facing right now, which is not really using it that much. But now we are actually getting to the end of this video. I really hope you liked watching this because I really enjoyed making it. It was so much fun. But before I go, I will quickly just flip through all of the pages I made in this video. But if you haven't already and you liked this video, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, leave a like and leave a comment down below with a mushroom so I know you watched until the end. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye bye!